Hi, Joel Brother to Art here. I'm starting this painting that you saw at the beginning with a grey wash. Um, I've watered down with some linseed oil, um, some black, titanium white, and some French ultramarine blue. And the idea in this uh, background is to um, not make it all, blend it all into one smooth background, but to move from a darker area to a lighter area, so more white on the right of the screen, as you can see there. And also to have patches of uh, the colour develop across the um, surface so that you have a more interesting, almost like a smoky effect background. So then using the lighter of the colour, obviously I put a, uh, um, a white area in the bottom, almost like a tablecloth. And then using the same colour, I kind of mark out the shape of the vase um, and what I do to make the vase uh, equal on both sides is to sort of measure it at certain points so the narrower points and where where the fattest part of the vase is I can kind of measure across and then um, work out if they're kind of equal and balance it out and that's that's my basic sketch for my vase uh, so then I'm just going to just gesture in uh, kind of the where I want the flowers to go which will give obviously if I just do it gesturally it will give the painting um, more of a flow than if I were to sort of start already blocking it in without um, doing it in a natural flowy way. Okay so here I am now blocking in the um, the vase. Now it's a white vase, this is going to be a Chinese vase. Well I say Chinese, it's blue and white, it could be Delft uh, which is from Holland um, they have some lovely little pictures and I suspect it is actually because um, it has a little uh, landscape on it um, uh, which is more like the Delft. Anyway, I tried to do a warmer white here so I did put a bit of Naples yellow in with my grey mixture because this vase isn't actually white. When you're doing white in an environment like this it will obviously reflect a lot of the colour and the light around it and absorb you know the the warmth of the um, um, surroundings. So now I'm just adding some shadow at the base of the vase um, and then obviously where the darkest part of the shadow is also a little bit of extra darkness there and then um, adding obviously the lighter and the lightest parts of the vase. So the light is hitting this more or less straight on but slightly to the side as you can see where the cast shadow is um, and so a lot of that brightness is on uh, the curviest parts of the vase that are protruding if you like forward. So the next thing I did was mix some uh, permanent rose with some titanium white so that I could mark out uh, where the flowers are going to go some of these are lighter, some of these are cooler, some of these are warmer, but really at this stage I just wanted to mark out uh, roughly where they were going to go so that I could then obviously work on values. Um, so this is a fairly mid-tone value for each flower that I'm um, blocking in. So then I just want to think about um, some of the darker areas that would be sort of uh, catching less light, which would be to the side of the vase and any flowers hanging down, obviously, that are sort of casting their own shade into inside the, um, the cup of the, the flower. And the last flowers I want to block in are the uh, forward flowers, the flowers that are sort of overlapping all the flowers that are behind. Um, and they happen to be kind of like a white cosmos. Um, so I, I added those last and then you can see already even with just this these blobs of paint that you've got uh, an arrangement that makes some sense. Normally I would block in foliage before um, I add the flowers but because the foliage in this case was very, um, what's the word, wispy, um, it wasn't a big uh, bushy block of foliage. You could see the background and the flowers behind and between. Um, so it wasn't really practical to do it that way. So I am now just trying to fit that round um, and keep it flowing. Um, so I am going over the flowers if, if need be because I can always go over the um, 
uh, where I've crossed over, I can always go over that later. So um, I, with these little buds here, what I prefer to do is start with the darkest colour that I see on the bud. And then I will add usually a, another two always really three other shades. Um, I want to keep it simple, but if you just add two shades of, of, of uh, light and dark, you end up with something quite flat and two-dimensional, dimen obviously. Um, so what I do at this stage is I add three. So as you can see, I've just added, an. that's the third one is the little highlight. All these details will get restated um, as I go through the painting because they do tend to sort of fade and absorb and then you need to restate them. So and that is a rule that I would apply to even painting the flowers and the vase. So I'm just adding some lighter um, parts to the um, stems and also obviously some foliage in between. And the cosmos have these kind of ferny sort of, um, pet not petals, leaves, and uh, they're quite difficult to paint and I'm not going to sit here painting them all exactly as they are. So I'm going to just create an impression um, of them by um, using the value range, um, a dark, a mid and a light to create this sort of frond effect. So I'm just going to restate some of the um, darker parts of the foliage just to um, obviously make uh, the lighter parts pop obviously and just to obviously um, suggest where the the mass of the stems come together and obviously block out a bit of the light in the um, neck of the vase there. Okay so I'm going to focus on this little um, cosmos flower hanging down here because um, you can see where obviously the, the inside cup of the cup of the uh, flower obviously doesn't get much light so we have to deal with that differently. I, I'm not going to um, paint in exactly everything that I see. This is not realism, it's more impressionism. Um, so it's really important really to get your values right and to get the temperature right, I think, which uh, means that you can just sort of, um, you can add these um, almost just like puzzle pieces really until you, until you get um, a flower. You're not really painting a flower as in drawing it and then and then colouring it in, you're you're using just the light and the darks to build um, the impression of um, of of the flower. And then you do um, exactly the same treatment with all the flowers, um, thinking of them as um, a, a range of colour and light and dark, rather than petals and um, leaves uh, and all the rest of it. So I will continue on. I'm not going to show you me painting all these flowers. That would be too boring. We're going to move on to the vase next. So as I mentioned, it's a blue and white pattern vase. And I'm going to start with a wash of some French ultramarine blue. And I'm also going to use a wash of cerulean blue so that I get two different uh, uh, types of blue and they kind of uh, complement each other. They kind of give a depth to the decoration without uh, you having to add any other colours. What you do add is extra value. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding an impression <laughs> of the shapes, the lights and darks that I see in blue. I used only two colours of blue. I used a cerulean blue and a French ultramarine blue. What I did do was I used a weak blue, so watery, uh, watered down with linseed oil. And then as I wanted to get more and more detail or some highlights, I would use a more concentrated blue. In the darker shadow areas, such as uh, on the uh, tip on the top of the vase, the lip of the vase, underneath the flowers, I added even a touch of black to add some highlights. These were little landscapes, which was also what made me think that um, it was a Dutch vase. These are little uh, landscapes. I think this is a little sailing boat. But as you can see, I'm not trying to paint a sailing boat. I'm trying to just create the impression of what I can see um, without getting into too much detail. And then I just gradually built it up until it became what is obviously a patterned blue and white vase, but without... Um, 
you know, the painstaking levels of realism that you would, um, that you can achieve actually using this same um, uh, um, painting uh, technique. But uh, I like this looser style and also I auction these um, on my eBay store. So I don't want to obviously be spending a whole day on something I might only sell for um, a few pounds. So, um, and then I just kept working until I was clear uh, that this is some more watery. There was some sort of almost clouds floating across um, in that little uh, scene, that little vignette there. And there was another little vignette at the bottom, which I think was a landscape with some more um, clouds. But as you can see, it doesn't really matter that you, you're not drawing a landscape. You're just drawing the impression of what you see and it still works. It translates. And then in the final part of the painting, I was just doing, as I said before, restating um, some of the highlights on the foliage and obviously on the vase and the flowers themselves, uh, where the paint had dulled or slightly dried. Um, you know, you can see then the colours have faded a bit, so you can then make them pop and, and restate them. Um, and I do that with the thicker paint. So I've gradually started with kind of quite loose, watered down paint with linseed oil. And then as I work back over the painting, uh, I will still have some linseed oil in the paint because I don't want it to drag and, and create like a dry. I mean, you may want that for some paintings, but I didn't want it on this. I want it nice and soft and, you know, romantic like flowers are. And that's pretty much how you build the painting. Um, um, and you can go obviously much further than this into realism or you can keep it nice and loose like this um, and still have a really beautiful painting. I hope you found this painting, um, painting, I hope you found this video <laughs> helpful and I hope you will subscribe and click the notification bell and um, ask any questions you like in the comments below and I will see you in the next video and stay around just for the end so you can see the final painting. Thanks then, bye.